welcome back, Guardians. I hope you all have taken well. Understandable if you have not. There is a tide at our feet where the water is murky and slowly rises to suffocate. The evacuations go well, or as well as they can go during this time of chaos and invasion. We've lost a little in comparison to what we still can lose. But the argument we intend to make here is the argument we as Guardians have been making and having amongst ourselves for quite some time. We've made little progress on our exterior battlegrounds. We haven't fully recovered from the Red War. We choose to stay passive against the threat within the Reef, and now we chose only to retreat against the threat of a paracausal enemy. Those within the city have echoed some of our dissenting voices against the vanguard commander, the politician, as he has been called in hushed corners. And what will the traveler do? The age-old question of our so-called savior has now penetrated the minds of the civilians we are destined to protect. Reports have flooded the tower, some publicly ousted in rage by guardians continually sacrificing, others supported by small circles of dissenting guardians. Between the two factions, the civilians that have lived through the chaos of six fronts, the Twilight Gap of the Red War and the Cabal occupation, have closed ranks with the Traveler and Guardians that defend the city. Others, less convinced, have begun to question the service or even loyalty of the Guardians. Are they more focused on their own tales of glory and prestige? Are they even motivated in the ideal of returning humanity to its rightful place amongst this solar system as its preordained rulers? Maybe it is true. You think to yourselves, Guardians, what great victories that we have made true through our strength of light or sword arm has had a direct effect on the expansion of our territory. The city's walls still need to be patrolled and maintained by the Titans. The hunters must continue to lead reconnaissance operations only miles from home. And the warlocks still attempt to communicate or translate the light now arcing from the traveler. To the point of our human brothers and sisters at home, sheltered under a thousand foot tall god, certainly, after all these years of constant war and conquest, our system would be made safer. The borders of our territory or our control made to expand. Certainly, we've made this solar system safer for guardians. But those who don't fear the traditional death typically need not holster caution into the bandolier of battle utility. Maybe those we defend at home are right. We need to be critical of our own actions, rise up to the mantle of maturity, and understand that our constant ambition of seeking ever greater challenge and reward must be done so in a fashion that first secures the future safety of the last city and not that of our glimmer stash. Perhaps we should challenge the so-called politician of Zavala where the consensus is too frayed to do so. The factions muted in their potential response. The speaker's position still vacate. Perhaps a new hunter leader within the vanguard can unite this division between Zavala and Ikora, hopefully providing response, maybe even reformation, removing the negative stigma we guardians carry inside the minds of those we are to protect. It's crisis after crisis, living scared and losing. This place was supposed to be safe. Instead, we've all paid. It's time the Traveler pulls its weight. Perhaps it is time. The Traveler must do something. It can no longer illuminate our sky in an idle state. It cannot run from the encroaching darkness, and it certainly must make a statement of its guardians, its protectors, that are now willing to make a virtual pact with the darkness and consume and even utilize fragments of its stasis power. Morale is a powerful thing. It is a weapon that is weightless and impossible to lift. 
It carries itself through the ranks of humanity's defenders like an arcing bolt of electricity. It can make humans do the incredible, but it also can make them do the disastrous. Perhaps that is what the darkness has intended all the while during this war of longevity. If we lose the war at home, lose the trust of those we are sworn to defend, are we truly guardians? Rumors are a dangerous thing, especially when combined with the morale commentary mentioned within this report. Imagine if there were cities hidden away from the collapse untold centuries ago, living, breathing, and possibly even thriving away from the prying eyes of an apathetic god. Certainly, that style of escapism would lift a certain hope into the hearts of the fatigued. Even those amongst the dead orbit would find respite in the idea of another set of cities free from the yoke of a god and the oncoming storm set to be upon us. The free capitals are just rumors, buried cave cities that predate the Golden Age. He had listened to the patrons in his brother's ramen house sling stories back and forth over mead and sake. No one has been there. Everyone has met someone who knows someone who all has a story where these cities are, but there had to be other people out there. After all, they came to the city from somewhere. He's sure there are other somewheres out there without so much noise. Rumors, perhaps. But these topics of conversation don't often just manifest themselves into the minds of those below overnight. Who's to say that a holdout of cities surviving both the collapse and the recent transgressions of alien invasion could not still be hidden away, their neutrality justified by the continual bloodshed wrought in the shadow of the traveler? We know that many during the Old Earth Golden Age and had a certain amount of time to prepare weapons and technology and hide themselves away. We know that the darkness, when it first arrived, devastated local weather systems, communications array, but it did not, at least not within our current knowledge, carry with it a physical force, an army of occupiers, if you will. Perhaps it is entirely possible that these cities exist. Maybe not to the glory we imagine of massive city structures penetrating deeply into the Earth's crust, but rather a series of complex tunnels and caverns supported by years of excavation and the laborious toiling of soil. The other possibility, and the more dire of thought, would say this is purely escapism hope twisting our upcoming potential defeat, pushing us into another area of retreat, of hoping for something that could exist, an area of safety and reprieve secluded far away from the warring of gods and minions. But we need to be more honest, more critical, more true to ourselves. These thoughts stem not from those that don't believe in our ability to win, but rather those who have grown fatigued of the actions of guardians, the actions of the tower, and the inaction of the traveler. In these few words, perhaps the darkness thoughts for us, translated through its would-be scion of Eris Morn, are correct that we support a god ultimately apathetic to our core objective as guardians, that we are nothing more than blind servants, hoping our objectives of peace and tranquility align with the traveler's objectives. But as humans yearn, beg, even plead for peace, guardians continue to grow numb to their constant requests. High upon our Mount Olympus, we demigods free from the curse of mortality war amongst ourselves, battle for scraps of scavenger aliens, and seek favor from our enemies more so than our own benefactor. We are, in some sense of the word, wrong. In Zavala's defense, we are meant to protect our people, not 
at our benefit, not so your pockets can remain filled with glimmer or your armor stay polished and constantly updated. Rather, we are to ensure that the lightless continue, that our legacy, our people, and our very civilization is forced into the foundation of the universe, ever expansive and never without a future. The times ahead of us will certainly be dire, Guardians. But whenever you do have the chance, spend some time in the cantinas and bazaars of the Lightless. Help them as Saint-14 did. Walk among them, not as gods or heroes, but as a common man. For the meek shall inherit the earth, and we are the ushers to their seats in the Chapel of Hope. Do not become blinded to our true goals of keeping those people safe, and do not become so mired in the vernacular or traditionalism that you aren't prepared for a conquest. There may come a time when we must shed our names and titles, forsake the bonds we have with the vanguard, and recapture this solar system in the name of all humanity, past, present, and future. In the meantime, Listen to the words of the people below us. Do what you can to assist the system-wide evacuations and stay safe. Hey everyone, Wally here back from a little break. Just wanted to drop a lore video on you. I know I took about, I, I want to say it's about a month now off and it's been really helpful. Work has been super crazy. It's kind of ramped up. I, I think I'm like in full work mode now, um, doing great things within the esports and gaming world. So it's it's been very interesting for me trying to balance this and my job. So I think I've kind of gotten that back to a good point. So just from a scheduling perspective, going to stick with Sunday videos for now. If I can sneak out a Wednesday sniper, cyberpunk video, I will absolutely try to do that. Don't want to drag this video on any further. I hope you guys enjoyed, I think it was dropped by DMG or it was dropped by Cosmo, this Citizens of the Last City piece where it kind of put us in the mind of the civilians for a second. Like, we don't often see that. We don't often get to hear that. We sometimes read about it in the lore cards, but I think it's interesting to see this sort of fragment of thought that the civilians are genuinely unhappy because guardians are acting well like guardians right we're just going out and securing loot and killing gods and we're sitting high upon our tower our mount olympus so to speak and not really answering any of their needs and they clearly have a need of fatigue how are we going to help them find some real respite how are we as guardians going to secure this golden age and make it a real thing and to them it seems like constantly we are fighting wars and battle and there is never this sense of actual peace or actual freedom and they start to at least what it feels like they start to blame guardians because all we are concerned about is like our titles and our glory and our own glimmer and our riches and and so on and so forth so we've kind of become drunk on our own power and we've lost sight of what we're supposed to be doing right as heroes we're supposed to be protecting these individuals we in my mind at least i would love for the story to go in the direction of like humanity actually recapturing the solar system and kind of pushing out these alien factions or figuring out a way to unite with them so that there is peace in the system and we sort of begin to recover ourselves and have more cities the one comment there about free capitals that's the first time i've ever heard of anything like that in the lore. If you guys have heard that before, please drop it in the comments and educate me. There has always been some commentary in D1 about there's other areas. Obviously there was talk of like the European dead zone. There was talk of like a Chicago area, New York, some of those things, but those were all sort of presumably dead areas where the fallen had kind of taken over. Very, very similar to like the European dead zone, right? Where it's just dead and it's a bunch of ruins and there's some human holdouts, sure, but it's not like any bastion of civilization, for example. So if there is this whole free capitals concept, I think that's really, really interesting if they actually exist. I would love to see us potentially move in that direction. And maybe there's some foreshadowing here. Not to drag this video on any longer, but maybe this is where the story goes in the next couple of years where as Guardians begin to understand that the Traveler is actually or potentially is evil and the darkness is potentially right, that's where we go to maybe escape the yoke and bring these 
this this exodus of humans with us to these free capitals and we find a new home away from the traveler we fight the traveler i don't know what the story is going to hold right i i think that there's a lot of awesome opportunity i think that i i hope i have high hopes for this upcoming dlc or i guess expansion whatever we want to call this the next year of destiny i just hope that in these content drought periods, there's more opportunity for players to kind of get together and experience awesome items. I think, you know, some of the stuff around Solstice of Heroes, um, not super spectacular fun. I think that also helped motivate me take some time off. Uh, but obviously, if you guys enjoyed it, more power to you. I really enjoyed this release. I would love to see more releases like this that kind of come randomly, uh, that maybe flesh out the world a little bit more, do some world building for us in the term of text, in terms of the last city, because it's an area we really don't get to see enough of. So that'll do it for me. I know I said I wasn't gonna go on for super long here, but that's what I did. Anyway, more videos coming out soon. I hope you guys are really excited for the holiday season, and I hope you're staying safe in those fires, coronavirus, the world uh, is going crazy. Just remember, we got a great community here. We got people that can help you if you want some of that escapism or just want people to talk to. Lore Seekers are always here if you want a group of like-minded individuals to celebrate what you love. That'll do it for me. I'm out of here. Peace.